Hi guys, Nick here. Uh, today I'm going to tie you an articulated bucktail pike fly that uh, my friends and I call the money maker because it just delivers day in day out. Uh, it's got an articulated shank, lots of bucktail on there, some hackle, some flash, and uh, the pike seem to climb all over it. I'm going to start the fly off with uh, articulated, with not an articulated, with just a 20 millimeter shank. This is going to be the articulation in there, so I'm going to stick it in the vise and that's gonna be the first thing that I tie. Now, for all my pike flies, I really like to use this uh, gel spun thread. This particular one is six aught nano thread by Semperfly, I, or nano silk. I think it's important to use this gel spun stuff because you can just really cinch down uh, materials, especially on um, big game flies like pike flies or musky flies or even bass flies. You don't want these, you're spending a lot of time, you don't want them chewed apart, and this thread is really gonna make sure that happens. So I'm just gonna do a couple layers of it. It is a little more uh, slippery than standard thread, so do a couple layers with some nice snug pulls, and that's gonna attach it onto that shank. Now, the first thing I'm gonna put on here is a piece, it's a tail of bucktail. Now, I'm gonna tie this version completely in white, except for the, uh, the hackle is going to be a grizzly hackle, so I got a, a brand new white bucktail here. You can see nice long fibers that are actually almost five inches long. You can get longer for pike. I don't think you need the longest bucktail fibers uh, in the world. So this five inch one is going to do a really good job for me. When I'm when I'm choosing actually where to take the sections of hair off the bucktail, at the very beginning of the fly, I'm actually going to start near the tip of the tail, and as I add bunch after bunch. I'm gonna kind of work my way down towards the base because there's more hair, or more air in the hair down here. It's a little more hollow, so it flares up a lot more, and it's gonna help build that profile. So, start off just by taking a little bunch from towards the tip section of the bucktail. I actually probably took too much, so I'm gonna split this. I'll use that later. You don't need to worry about stacking it. Just clip the, clip it so it's even so that when you tie it on you're not losing any make sure you've gotten rid of any under hair and any loose fibers out of the front and I'm going to attach that right at the back part of my shank hey tip it my dogs come to join us here now you'll see that the tails kind of sticking up a little bit because I have it on the shank I have no room to grab so what I actually do here is it's really tied down tight I'm gonna take it out of the vise and actually just kind of bend that down and now you can see it's sticking straight out and I'm gonna put it back in the vise and now I'm gonna finish tying the butts down and clip them as closely as I can just like that the next thing I'm gonna add on here is two fairly long uh, grizzly saddle hackle fibers you can use really big long schlappen type things and if you do that you might want to actually put it in under the bucktail and then put the slap and then put the bucktail over it with a couple other uh, saddle feathers over top. But for pike, again, you you want a big fly, but you don't want the bulkiest thing in the world. You want to be able to fish this uh, for a whole day. So I find that this is kind of the best compromise of size, movement, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to select two relatively large. Uh, they're about eight or nine inches long and I'm gonna strip those right out of the base of the of the skin laying one on my side and kind of tenting it over so it's it's on the side but it's a little bit over the top it's kind of three quarters the way up there pull and then some anchor wraps in front and I'm gonna do the same for the opposite side of the fly a little bit over the top make sure that the hackle feathers are are even and evenly spaced over the over that bucktail so that looks really nice and then a couple securing wraps you can see I'm really giving it a good tug after every step there Take my dollar star hair clip and this is going to help you keep everything out of the way if you've never tied big flies that's a pretty good pretty good 25 cent investment for this flying you use a couple different types of flash but 
I'm gonna start off with this Polar Flash. I find it's really uh, good stuff here. It gives, you know, it's kind of a cross between Flash Boo and Crystal Flash. I take a, not a huge hank, but a fairly healthy amount here. I've got about a dozen or 15 different fibers there. Now I'm gonna do a pretty aggressive taper here. So it's really long uh, and a nice taper. You don't want it to be too blunt, or at least I don't. You can do whatever you think is gonna look best. And I'm gonna have about 60% of it out the back of the fly and 40% out of the front. So add that 60% out of the back and it should go just about to the tip of the hackle and tie it in. And on this one, you're actually gonna do your best just to keep it right on top of the fly. Now I'm gonna take the 40% that I had out the front and I'm gonna fold it back and attach that like this. And now you can see that it's, if I was to pull it up, it's kind of a nice even taper all the way to the back. It's not too bulky at one length or anything like that. Now, the next step is I'm going to grab a little bit of UV polar chenille. And this, this step here is totally optional. I like it because it adds a little bit of that under flash, but it does nothing for the bulk of the fly or anything like that. So tie that on, bring the thread forward a little bit, leaving enough space here at the front, probably a half centimeter, so that you can still, we're adding one more bunch of bucktail, two more feathers, plus flash still at the front of the hook. So only about four, maybe five turns, and it's just to fill a little bit of space and add a little bit of flash to the fly, which is just gonna show through as it's pulsing in the water. Little bit, of, little bit of saliva on the fingers so that you can stroke the fibers back. Make sure they're really tied in there and we are ready for the next section of bucktail. So for here, I'm gonna take one, because I don't want this to flare up too much again. I'm gonna take it from about the same spot on the skin. Again, you don't need too, too much bucktail. A lot of people think if I put more bucktail on, it'll look bigger. Well, dealing with these big predator flies, you do need a, relatively large amount of bucktail but it's more about how you actually use the materials on the hook versus uh versus putting more material on right more material doesn't necessarily mean more movement it just means it's going to get more waterlogged so it's not always the best bucktail flows and you just want it to flare up a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm actually i'm not reverse tying this i'm going to just tie it in straight backwards pull really hard on the thread to flare it up and then I'm gonna put a couple other saddle hackles over and, uh, and some flash. So I did three loose turns and then I tightened just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is switch hands on my bobbin and I'm using my right hand to turn this bucktail evenly around the shank and even to the point of turning my vise over to make sure that I like the coverage. Then I'm gonna pinch it where I want it and pull straight down. When I pull straight down, you can see that bucktail is going to shoot up. Fold it back a little bit to clip these butt ends off, and that isn't going to go anywhere. And you can see it's still going to give me a great profile of the water. There's not too much material, and I didn't have to reverse tie yet. In fact, for this fly, we're only going to do one reverse tie right at the very front because that's going to help keep that shape of the bait fish. Take my hair clip again to keep that out of the way. Go back to my grizzly saddle hackle and I'm going to try to find two feathers about the same size as the, or at least the same length as the ones from before. Here's a pretty nice long one. One more. I'm running short of the good size. This one's not too bad either. Take that one. Peel it off. I'm going to try to get it almost the same length. And again, mostly on the side and just a little bit up and over the top. Same thing right here, mostly on the side, a little bit over on the top of the fly, kind of like a tent. Pull down hard, fold them forward, and then some anchor wraps in the front. Those anchor wraps are really handy to keep the, if you accidentally bump the bobbin, it gives you a couple turns before everything starts unraveling on you some nice securing poles and you can see this is turning into a 
really nice mobile large tail section. It almost looks like it could be a fly in itself. And if you were tying a smaller pike fly or maybe a fly for some bass, you could actually just have done that on a hook and you'd basically be ready to get to go. It's like a big deceiver. Take another little hank of that polar chenille. That's what I like to put on. Do a little bit of a taper again. And again, you're gonna go about 60, 40. So 60 over the back, 40% over the front, two or three turns, snug, anchor up, and now I can make sure that this flash is spread evenly over the whole top half of the fly. A couple turns right there. One handy tip I like uh, with predator flies, but any larger fly really, is that you don't even need to really tie knots. I can actually take this super glue and I'm just gonna put it right on the fly and it's actually gonna act like a weld. So I'm gonna put some of this gel super glue. Now I use gel because it doesn't run down the thread. If you can look closely, uh, I've, I've got it on the thread there and it's just, it's just balled up. It's not actually dripping, so it's really secure. I'm gonna put about an couple drops over about an inch of thread and now I put it on where the head of my fly is do another dozen or 15 wraps pull really tightly and when I go to clip the fly you'll see that thread does not unravel you push down on it and that is going to be completely locked into place the next step of our flies we're gonna need to attach this shank to the main hook. So our main hook is gonna be a four-aught predator hook. And I'm gonna take some just 30 pound coated wire and take about five inches. Now, if I was to do the same style here, but use a tandem hook rig, so I have two hooks, you would want about eight inches because you're gonna tie the wire forward on the hook and then actually fold it back and secure it again so it can't pull out. With just the shank, we don't have to worry about that. So I'm simply going to put one layer of uh, wire over the hook for about one inch and that is going to be enough to hold it securely on. Over the wire I'm going to put an orange bead to act as a little bit of a spacer and also a bit of a bright color hotspot inside the fly. You can add up to three if you like. It really depends on what you think is going to look the best um, and what you're going for as far as the fly goes. You do have a bit more of a gap in the joint if you have three beads, I think one or two beads works very, very well. I also think three beads sometimes adds, lets you make the fly a little bit larger without actually adding any additional weight to it. So it's just going to go like this on there. Take that out and put that aside because I'm going to add that on right away. I've got some very large four uh, predator hooks right here. And that's what the main part of the hook is going to be. I wouldn't suggest going less than a 3 aught. I find uh, for pike, a 3 aught's about as small as I'm going to go. I will tie a single hook 3 aught fly that's only about 6 inches long. And anything else, I'm using preferably a 4 or 5 aught fly. Or a 4 or 5 aught hook for the fly. Again, that's for where I fish. Um, we don't have a ton of you know, huge, huge pike, 25 pounds or, or larger, but you've got really good chances any day you go out of 12 to 15 pound pike, you've got a reasonable chance of 20 pound pike, but really the vast, vast majority are gonna be in the one to five pound range. Um, and we just have a lot of them. However, you just because the pike are small doesn't mean that you can't use a large fly. In fact, I use a large fly and catch really small pike even if I'm fishing you know a little hammer handle lake the big size doesn't put them off so I'm gonna lay the wire on my side of the hook and you can see the bead is there and I only want the loop to be about the same length as the bead anymore and it's just gonna it could end up tangling on itself so I've put them the wires perpendicular to each other or sorry parallel to each other on my side of the hook you don't need to put them on top. It's not gonna affect it at all. And wind down actually slightly around the hook bend. 
you can see I'm slightly around the hook bend and that's going to keep that bead nicely into place and it's not going to move for you. Next thing I'm going to do is always use wire cutters, don't use scissors. I'm going to clip it so I have about an inch of wire here, maybe just under an inch, three quarters of an inch um, on the hook shank and that is what is going to get wrap, 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 pull really tight with the GS GSP thread, wrap, 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 pull really tight and then go back to the rear of the hook and again because you don't have a, if this is a hook you would tie it forward, fold it over and tie back again. I don't have a hook so I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to take some liquid super glue this time and place it on top of the hook shank. Hi Tippy. And um, give that about 10 seconds to drip down into the wire and then again to instantly cure it, lick your fingers and rub the super glue. It'll become a little bit white but it's going to do an instant cure and you don't have to sit here and wait, wait, wait. So I'm going to go back to about halfway up the hook point with my thread right to about there and that's where I'm going to tie on uh, the first bunch of bucktail that's going to be on the front half of the fly. I'm going to be about a third of the way down the bucktail skin here now and I'm going to take another another chunk of bucktail. Mix it with that one that I separated earlier. Clip the, doing too much off camera here, clip the butts. Clear up any of the under fur or just broken pieces. And there's a nice tapered um, bucktail section. To tie this on here, again on top, one loose, two loose, three loose, give it a little tug. Not a big tug, little tug, just so you can switch hands on the bobbin. And then again, use your thumb and fingers to control what you're doing. Tying a big fly, you're going to spend 40 minutes maybe, half hour for sure, tying this kind of thing. Don't put it to chance of just spinning it and hoping for the best. Move it around with your fingers. Once you like the positioning of everything, hold it down, pull tight, and it's going to flare up for you. And when you factor it in with this tail section there, it's a really, really nice, uh, nice taper, nice flow over the fly. Clean up the butt sections just a little bit because they don't actually add much to the fly at all. Now I'm going to add for the next couple sections, I'm actually going to use a, a Mirage, a Pearl Mirage, and take not too much. This stuff is so bright. Take maybe eight strands, 10 strands, somewhere in that ballpark. And I'm actually going to fold it over into roughly half. Don't worry about exact half because you're tapering it anyways. And then you do another fairly substantial taper. Do your best here to roll this flash all the way around the hook. If you get a little bit less on the bottom, it's not that big a deal. But what I'm going to do here is kind of push it back like this so that as much of the fly is covered as I can get. This way, no matter which way the fly is in the water or which position the fish is looking at it from, it's from the side, the top, whatever, it's got a fair amount of, uh, of flash in there. I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to go back to my, um, polar flash, the, the UV stuff, and I'm going to tie to about here on the hook. So just under halfway or just about halfway, but loose wraps, you're, or not loose wraps, but space wraps. You're only going to put in maybe five again, it's just up to here, six tops. One, two, you can see they're not even touching. Three, four, five, okay, six and a half. Six wraps, they don't have to touch. It's just so that it fills up a little bit of that dead space. If you don't have poly flash, just dub it if you want. You don't have to even do that. You could just run the thread all the way up. I'm gonna go back to my bucktail. I'm gonna do one more um, just stacked bunch worked a little bit further down the base again so there's my stack bunch 
three loose straps, pull. When you get the hang of this style of fly, this kind of big articulated deceiver sort of thing, you will be able to tie an articulated one in under 30 minutes. Um, it's really not overly technical. It's just putting the materials down kind of with the right spacing in the right order so that you get a good profile, but you don't, you don't just, you know, add mass and add mass and add mass to the fly, which is what's just going to make it really difficult to cast, really difficult to fish and isn't actually adding all that much. Again, the pearl flash, I'm going to take eight or 10 strands, cut it in half, taper, and away we go. Wrap it around. The hook so twist it around the hook as much as you can if you have to cut a couple pieces and physically tie them into the bottom it's not the end of the world that's fine okay nice I'm gonna take that pearl uh, the polar chenille and I'm going to once I find it again I keep throwing some and you are going to do two at most three wraps because you need to go only to here. You're going to add the pearl chenille and then two more bucktails and then a big stacked head of uh, an Antron dubbing blend. So you need still a fair amount of space here at the front. We're going to bulk up the front of the fly. The back is for the movement. Right, it's going to have a nice wiggle in the water, lots of motion, not very dense. The front, I want it pretty dense. The front, if it's dense, it's going to push water. Um, even if the fish don't see it, they'll kind of feel it if that's the case. And you can see this really nice bait fish shape is kind of building up here. Now, at this point in the fly, you've kind of got yourself two options. I guess three options. If you want a fairly large profile but not too big a little bit easier to cast with like a nine weight and with this is the way i'm going to build it right now i'm going to reverse tie here and then actually in front of it put a straight tie backwards just flare it that's going to act as a bit of a uh it's going to kind of keep it's a controlling wrap almost it's going to keep that reverse tie from being too up and down and too dominant if you really have a lot of you know you got 25 pound pike preying on three pound lake white fish and you want this to be a really large fly you might put uh, two reverse ties or one more stack and then a reverse tie at the end before you do the head or if you want a really sleek fly maybe you fish in an area with just smaller pike and you're using this uh, get a lot of bass as a bycatch kind of thing you might even just put two straight ties in and just flare them up and put the head at the front so you'll end up with a lot sleeker of a fly I'm gonna do a reverse tie here and then a straight tie at the head before I add the dubbing because for where I am and how I fish I find that that's the most consistent consistent body shape to the flies so I'm gonna take my bucktail stack and clip it off so I'm keeping all of these lengths of bucktail the same in fact, sometimes towards the front, you even shorten them by about a half inch or a quarter of an inch because it, it helps keep that uh, shape from being too dominant. If you were building super large musky flies, you might increase the length a little bit. I prefer actually to keep it identical or start shortening it on the uh, hook portion of the fly. So I'm going to line it up here just where the polar chenille is. Carefully switch hands. One loose wrap, two, three is always a slight pull. You can see it start to flare. That means it's caught in there. And I'm now, again, same as the other steps, start twisting that hair around and make sure that it's relatively evenly covered over the whole shank. It doesn't have to be perfect, but relatively evenly. So holding it there, pull, and you can see that hair just start to go up. A couple more wraps, a couple more pulls. Clean up the butts because they don't, they don't add anything to the fly except weight when they get wet, so get rid of it. <laughs> Most expensive uh, fly tying tool you can imagine here comes into play. A used up ballpoint pen with the ink removed, because that's going to be what I'm going to use to push this back over. 
make sure that it's nice and clean, pull the thread out so that you can get in front of it. And you're going to build up a thread dam in front of this reverse tie and that's what's going to actually force it backwards. So you're working against it, you've tied it in forward and you're folding it back so it's going to want to sit up. And we are going to keep that in uh, under control by adding a thread dam. So this GSP is slippery so you're going to add 10 wraps up to the bucktail and then probably have to do an eye and back little run of the thread there so otherwise it it'll slip down on itself. This way you'll get a nice even thread dam. So you can see right there, it's sticking up. It's not sticking up too steeply. Once I add another one over top, it's gonna to sit just like this, which when you factor in the rest of the fly, that's gonna be an absolutely beautiful profile. I'm gonna add in a sort of a nicety here you don't this part's totally optional i'm going to add uh, some of that lateral scale flash along each side so i'm going to quickly just cut off two two strips of it put one on your side i'm just going to angle it to be about like three quarters the length of the fly i don't put it the whole length three four wraps and then ah, just fold that other one over don't cut it off it's just more flash just like that one more on my side Again, about three quarters the length of the fly. That doesn't look like the... Fold it back over. All right, there we go that back into place and I'm going to take my last bucktail section here and I'm now about half to two-thirds the way down my my um, bucktail right there so I didn't quite get enough get a little bit more so at the head again you want them a little bit more bulky because this is where you're going to be using this section of the fly. This is going to be pushing water. Um, it's going to make a little bit of commotion. It's going to hold the shape. You want this section here to hold the shape. So I'm going to lengthen it enough here. If you aren't sure how long to tie it, just literally undo this. And so I can see that this, you see how that's way too long. I'm going to actually want it about, so you can see a bit of a taper, about there. So I'm going to reclip. Try it again. Okay. Alright. Good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to attach it. I have some butt ends I'm gonna to have to cut off. Pull it. Same job as before. Spin it. A few more wraps. Pull a few more wraps. And then you can see that there, that's going to be an amazing profile on this guy. Really good. Take your time, try to get as many of those Um, the butt ends out of the ways you can. I could have done a better job of clipping them to length before putting it in, but I wanted to make sure I didn't uh, have it slip on me. All right, it's good. I'm happy with that. Go over it, pull. Good. Now, the head is actually going to go on in two separate bunches. So I'm going to put kind of a small bunch towards the back and then a big bunch towards the front. There's two, you have, again, a couple options here of how you want to finish the fly off. You can go a single color over the whole 
length. You can go uh, black or olive or something on top and then like a white on the bottom. I'm just gonna go one color all the way around. Now, for my heads, what I do is I take a simple long black Antron and this is a black kind of a sparkle dub, sort of almost like a dubbing version of angel hair and I'm just gonna blend the two. Take a fairly large wad of uh, black Antron and a slightly smaller chunk of your black flash. Now remember, you can, you can always blend this huge amount and not use it all, but it's kind of lackluster when you get to the finish, you know, the finishing portions of your fly. You've you've put your two chunks of dubbing on, you've glued the eyes on, you've done all that stuff, and then you look at it and go, oh, I really wish I had a bit bulkier of a head on there. So I just make a lot. I can always use it for a couple flies. And I'm just hand blending. Okay, that's not bad. If you really want, grab a comb at this point, comb out any of those clumps. I'm not going to worry about it till afterwards. I'm going to comb the head once it's on the fly. Then I'll get rid of any of the clumps. So I've divided it a little bit. I've got this amount here. I'm going to divide that into two. And just sort of taper it up. And 50-50, I'm going to go right up against the bucktail here on the top section of the fly. Make sure you pull down. I'm going to take my other little bit here that's got slightly less. I'm going to put it on the bottom section of the fly. Make sure that you've got coverage around everything. Okay. So you can see it looks like that. I'm going to pull the top back, pull the bottom in half so my thread can sort of sneak through. And I'm just going to work it back of the fly a little bit, bring the thread up, put it in front like that. So you can see a nice head starting to form here. Now I'm going to take my bigger, even bigger wad, even it out, take about half, or just, just about half here, maybe slightly larger than half. Even it, even it, even it. And I'm going to make sure that I've got, again, even coverage. Now I'm right behind the hook eye. And pull down nice and hard. Double check everything. You're at the end. Don't ruin your fly because you don't have the head on straight or whatever. And you've just spent the last 30 minutes tying this thing. Get nice head on there. Put it around, pull a couple tight wraps. Now before I finish it, I always make sure that I've got, because I can still unwrap here, I just want to make sure that I'm going to be able to get at my hook eye when I get to that point. So I've actually somehow covered the hook eye. So what I'm going to do is unwrap, because it might only be the bottom section for example. I can I can take it out. So so it's there. See, I got the hook eye. So it was my my bottom section. So I have to go just back a little bit here, so that I can make sure that I don't ruin this at the very final stage. Put it back on and make sure that I stick a little bit towards the body of the fly when I'm wrapping this section there. Okay, now I can look, I can pull, and I see my hook eyes nicely exposed right there. So I'm, now I'm happy with that. I'm gonna, again, I'm not going to tie a knot, I'm going to just take my gel super glue, put it on a couple inches of the thread, and I'm not even going to the hook eye, I'm actually going to do this in between right here in the, that little V we got. So making sure not to go forward to the hook eye, a dozen tight wraps, pull the thread up, 
clip it and now I'm going to carefully make sure because that glue in between is actually going to help this dubbing head stay in place. Push it back, grab my comb and now I'm going to comb this whole deal here. So you can see, nice head. Doesn't look like much right now. It's like the 90s when bed head was cool. It's not, this will get fixed too. Take your hair, clip. And I've got a really nice, uh, nice bulky head right there. I'm gonna take, these eyes I'm gonna put on are, are one centimeter. Uh, eight mil, nine mil, 10 mil, 11 mil, any of that's gonna be a good size for a pike fly eye. I'm gonna use 10 mil. Before you attach them, a binder clip is very good. It's a lot better than one of these guys because it's got, it's flat. It applies even pressure. This isn't flat, there's those teeth, it's tough to get it. Plus this is hard, like this will squeeze all the way in there and these eyes are gonna stay on a lot better even without coating them in epoxy or anything which makes the fly a lot heavier. I'm gonna take my gel super glue and apply a pretty generous amount where I want the eye, you know, push it down a little bit because you want this, you don't want this just on the top of the fly on the dubbing, you want this in, you want it through, you want it to the thread that's on the hook. So I've got one of my 3D one centimeter eyes and I'm going to carefully put that in place and don't use your finger because your finger always manages to get stuck to the eye. And I'm going to just gently push with a pair of scissors for five or 10 seconds. Go to the other side. Again, fairly generous amount, push it in. Make sure you've got enough glue on there because that you want it to soak through. And I'm gonna take my second eye and put it on, again, with my scissors. I'm gonna make sure that it's straight. You don't want it turned like that or like this. So take your time, look at it, put it straight, and then push it on, you know, for the five, eight, 10 seconds. Now take your binder clip, because they're they're on there, you know, fairly snug, they're not super secured. And I turn it sideways so that this weight doesn't pull the eyes out of position. And carefully, carefully. Attach it like that. And just check that they didn't slide out of position. Grab your beer and have a couple, a couple sips, because we're gonna let this sit for about 20 seconds, and then we're gonna take a look at it. So there we go. This is what I call the money maker. It's a uh, fairly straightforward, articulated bucktail pike fly. It comes out at about, if you do it this way, it'll come out at nine, maybe 10 inches if you really push it. You can tell that when it gets wet, it's gonna have this really good uh, wide head profile. It really jerks different directions in the water. It doesn't just track in a straight line. It'll go side to side, a little bit erratic, and that tail has just got loads of movement, loads of flash, and uh, it's one that I definitely always have in my box. Hope you enjoyed it.